Now, the last bit of this here is about nonlinear time series. So it's outside the scope of this course, but it's an outlook into what else is out there, what could you think of doing next. So let's just look at this realization here of a process. I'll show you the process down here. We have a so-called Brownian motion here, and then we have a an equation part down here where it says, well, if xt is close to minus 1, this is very close to 0, this part, or if it's close to 1 up here, then this is very close to 0. So we have a process where the first part here has a tendency to drag towards the center, but whenever you're close to 1 or minus 1, you stay there until you get sufficiently far away to jump to the other state, and then it jumps back and so forth. So that's the process. It is a continuous time process, also the Brownian motion here. So it's a continuous time version of a random walk. So what, is th what are the properties here? Just to show you, basically, it looks just like random walks that I've simulated down here, but it's just to show you it's basically the same thing, but it's continuous. And now, the fact that it's in continuous time makes it a little bit more you can say challenging to think of, because in continuous time it is continuous with probability 1. Now, besides being continuous, it's nowhere differentiable, again with probability 1. And if you want to take and stretch out the graph over any interval, the length will be infinite due to the infinite variation. So. Another example of that, I don't know if you know that, but the, how many of you have looked at fractals? Let's just show you a simple one, just to kind of give you an idea of what this is. Now, uh, one simple fractional is the one where you start out with just a line, you divide it into three parts, then you take the center part and substitute that with two lines and pieces like this, and then you continue doing that. You take each section here and then you subdivide into three and do the same substitution so you get this in the next iteration, and at some point this becomes difficult to draw. That's why you start using a computer. Uh, but then you need to figure out how to program it. So that was iteration 0, 1, 2. And if I do one more down here, then for each line segment up here, I have to split that into three and make a small thing here. At some point it gets, I think, at least quite beautiful. But the property of this line here is when you do it and you repeat this process an infinite number of times, then the length of this line becomes infinite, just as is the case for the Brownian motion. And now I think I will just finish this iteration and call that sufficient number of artistic drawing for today. Um, and I'm almost getting there. I'm sure you can program something that makes this nicer, but at least call that artistic add onto it. So the fractal here has dimension four thirds. Can't say the same thing about the Brownian motion, but what you do can say something about is it is continuous. In practice, we will typically look at it as a sample thing. So it becomes more like the random walk that we know but always keep in mind that it is continuous. The equation that we looked at is a stochastic differential equation, and more generally, you can say, well, you have some drift part here, and you have a diffusion part. Relative to an ordinary differential equation, note that the dt is moved to the right-hand side, and then you have the dw out here as the noise process, typically a Brownian motion coming through something. Really? It is an integral equation of this form here, and this is a stochastic integral. But let's not focus too much on that. 
just to say that it's out there. Another thing is so-called co-integration, where if you have two processes here, where if you look at one and you look at the other, you see that this down here is superimposed on top of a function of the other. So then if you translate x2 rather than plotting x2 down here as the other process, you subtract a one and something from the first one up here, then you see something that is more like white noise. So basically, you take this process up here and you add something to it. That's what you call co-integration. So it's the same time series, it's just a different coordinate set. And to say a little bit more about co-integration, to get some examples we have here, you can also, if you're good enough and do it in the right time, you can get a Nobel Prize. So thank you for staying, staying with the course here, and maybe you can bring it as far as to Nobel Prize. If you do that, then I mean, I would be happy to know if I inspired you to get a Nobel Prize. But yeah, you can always dream. But there's more, all many other things that you can look at than just co-integration and continuous time processes. You also have sp spatial time series, where the spatial domain gives an extra correlation structure. You have to keep track of sunspots, and Rob Hinman has a data library here with a lot of different examples that you can look at if you have time and are interested in that. So highlights for today, recursive least squares. You can wrap many different models into that. In practice, you would often want to do it adaptively, in particular if you have something where things are indeed changing over time. And you can use the common filter to trace parameters. And you can do pseudo um, Adapt to pseudo recursive uh, least squares if you have an armor model structure as well. And then a little bit about what to do in continuous time, nonlinearities, and stochastic differential equations. And if you are here at DTU, some subjective courses could be the advanced time series course, or the diffusion and stochastic differential equations, or the you can say more basic stochastic processes course that is more on, you can say, discrete state space as well. So thank you. That was all. <laughs>